Okay guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be heading over to the job site so that we can finish up that box beam ceiling. We're gonna be installing the crown inside the boxes that we made last time you joined me at the job site. So now, today what we're gonna be doing is using a technique where I'm gonna be framing out the, uh, the crown molding. So I'm gonna be cutting all the pieces in one shot and then putting them together as a giant picture frame. Now I've done this in the past, but I've used CA glue to do it. So um, with these frames, are a lot bigger. They're, uh, they're about uh, eight feet long by six feet wide. Uh, it's very unwieldy. So the CA glue, it can be brittle at times. And when using solid wood, sometimes it's heavy and it's awkward and putting it up in place, it could snap. We don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna be using a technique that I've seen uh, Spencer Lewis do. He's from Insider Carpentry. He has a YouTube channel called Insider Carpentry. So I'm gonna link that down there because I don't want you to think I'm trying to take credit for something like this. I know most of you have seen him and he's a fantastic finished carpenter. So I've only seen him do this technique before while I was searching for uh, a way to really uh, reinforce these joints before popping it into place like that. So uh, come with me to the job site and let's start doing it. Okay, so now we're gonna start installing the crown molding. I'm gonna cut all the pieces, make it into a frame that's gonna fit it. Uh, like a slight pressure fit inside the box and then we're going to tack nail it in place to hold it in. So what I'm going to do when I measure with the, uh, the spacing in between each one of the beams is I measure down about uh, three and a half inches. That's the projection of the crown where it's going to sit from the ceiling. So it's, it's actually more like close to four inches down. So what I did was I went around and I just made a mark with a piece of the crown in all the corners so that I know where to keep my tape. So then what I do is go down to that mark and I'm going to measure in and get a measurement from one side and then hit my tape on the other end and then measure to that line right there and then add them up and that's going to be my total distance. Instead of trying to fit the tape measure into the corner and then kind of guess, this is a lot easier and more accurate. So what I'm going to do is work in millimeters for this because I want to be able to take off a millimeter on each one of the pieces so that they fit snug but nice where I can slide them in without too much pressure. So what I'm going to do is take a measurement here for 900. Okay, I'm making it down 900. And then I come from the other side, and I'm going to hit it right in the same spot that I have my mark. Make it a little darker so I can see it. And then I'm going to take that measurement, which is 571. And so the total is going to be 1471. Right, 900, 571, 1471. So that's with the, a little bit, uh, like a, a millimeter taken off of what I really need in reality so that I don't have to really force this thing in there. I want it to slide in nice with no problems. So now I'll just go around and I'll do all the same. I did it on this side already here and I'm moving in. I have all the pieces numbered so that I know when I put the box together, we can slide it up in the direction it needs to go. Okay, so after we took all the measurements, I have all the boxes numbered so I know where everything's gonna go. And not only do we have each measurement of each piece, but we also have the number in the order that we need to glue them together so that we can put them up in the right spot. So this way everything matches perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna cut some crown. They're all gonna be inside corners. We're gonna be cutting in the nested position, which is upside down and backwards, some might say. So we have our crown stops set up, but we first need to make our first cut for the inside corner here so that we can measure off of our inside measurement. So, and as long as I'm sitting flush against the fence in the back here, I can make my cut and I know that I'm good. My first cut has to be 1470, so I'm hooking it on the long point of that miter on the inside. Come down here, go 1470. And the way I like to cut this to make it perfect is first I drop it in on zero. Then I come to my measurement, line it up with my laser to get it just about where I need it to be. Once I have that, I'm gonna measure down with my saw, make sure that I'm on that line, hold it in position. Then I'm gonna swing it to the inside 45. Let's get a little bit of glue on there. I don't want too much squeeze out here. 
Now I'm assembling these just like giant picture frames and I'm using these uh, miter spring clamps on the outside portion to hold it while I staple it. I'm using um, a pneumatic stapler and this is good for framework and also for when you're putting this crown molding together like this. All right, so the lighting might not be great here, but you can see I put three staples on the top and then just stitched the corners there. And on the bottom, uh, I just put one and a quarter inch brad nails through the miter there. That locks it together. It's coming out real strong. It's easy to install this way. Now I'm using quarter inch staples here to lock everything together. And I think that's the perfect size for this. You want to make sure that you're not over gluing the joints. Uh, I usually use quick and thick type bond for this, but I didn't have any on hand, so I'm just using regular type bond. But uh, if you over glue it, it'll squeeze out to the front. And then if you don't clean it properly, it could affect the color of the stain when you apply it. Now, once you have all the pieces stapled together and glue in all the corners, uh, you'll be able to get it in, in one piece here as a whole frame. Then you won't have to worry about any corners being out of square uh, or 45 degrees or anything like that. You just pop everything into place, give it a little bit of persuasion, just a, enough where you can tap it right in there with a, a beater block if you have to. Uh, if you make it a little bit uh, smaller, then you actually can pressure fit it in real nice, and then you won't have to tap it in. But uh, I made this just slightly snug so that I used a beater block and a hammer, tapped it into place, and it came out perfect. There's absolutely no seams showing whatsoever because of that. And then it's just a little rinse and repeat. Once you get the first one in, you just have all your frames pre-made and sitting where they need to go and tap them into place. And that's why I numbered everything on the backs and also in um, all my plans as I measured them and drew them up, just so that we didn't get turned around at all and try to fit it in the wrong way. If it was a couple of millimeters off on one side and then you put it in backwards, then you would have a hard time fitting it in there because you'd be pushing it into uh, an opening that wasn't specifically sized for that part of the crown. And listen, hey, nobody's perfect. You can build this thing where you think it's 100% square, and you may have done that, which I did in this case, and I actually checked the corners. They are all perfectly square, but the walls on the sides are not square, and the ceiling is not flat. So that contributes to all the factors of having a couple of millimeters off a uh, quarter of an inch here. Everything is going to be off because nothing will ever sit perfect when you're working with that many variants of walls and ceiling. Now just to give you an idea of not cutting things absolute perfect to the size that they are, this one particular box, I forgot to subtract that millimeter on each side and you can see it was a little bit more snug than I would have liked it to have been. It all worked out in the end, but it was more work than I bargained for. Okay, so here is a look at the crown, round box beams. See the miters came out nice and tight. Everything is looking good. I didn't film that last box off to the right just because it was more of the same. So let's get a look at it from this corner right here. And that's obviously going to be stained black like the rest of the ceiling. Let me slow it down a little bit here so you can see as I come through. And it's just the perfect amount of reveal from the crown down to the bottom of the box beam. All right, I think this ceiling turned out great. Okay guys, so that worked out great. The ceiling looks great. I can't wait to put the stain on there and get a finish on it and be done with that part. I have a lot more to do in that basement still. We're gonna be doing some pilasters on the walls, some kind of columns, make it look good. That's gonna be the movie theater side of the basement. You've seen in the background as I'm doing it, the bar, uh, I already finished with that. You've seen all those videos, but if you haven't, make sure you go and check those videos out. That bar turned out fantastic. And uh, we still have, you know, a lot more jobs to do. I have a lot of exciting news to come. I'm not going to share that with you right now. Um, you probably have seen on Instagram um, or the uh, Scalaro Woodworks Facebook page also, if you're not on Instagram uh, or on YouTube, I've also posted pictures um, 
of me opening the other part of the wall here to the shop. So that's given me a lot more room and a lot more, more so than a room because the lolly column's there. I got a lot more light shining into the other side, but I really, really have a lot of room now to move around. Okay, so um, stay tuned. We got a lot of stuff to do. I have uh, some new sponsors, and so stay tuned for that because they're really good sponsors. I. I only choose to work with the sponsors that I think are going to be really worth it and worth it, not for me also, uh, definitely worth it for me obviously, but also worth it to you guys because I want you guys to understand that these are the tools um, that will get you to do the job the way you need to do the job without any hassle and save you time. Time is money and we want to get you the accuracy you need. So stick around for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that picture of a notification bell. It's going to notify you every time I upload a new video. And um, I'll see you guys in the next video, which should be one of the sponsored videos. All right, guys, so stay tuned for that. It'll be a lot of fun.